Hey everyone, it's Agent Mead from Delta Tactical. In my last video, I showcased an Umbra build, and in the comments from that video, there was a recommendation that I look at adding skill tiers to the build, the waveform holster, and a piece of wyvern. This video is going to showcase what I've done with from those comments. First, let's have a look at the specialization. We're running the technician class, and there's a number of reasons why. Uh, first and foremost, the most important reason is for the extra skill tier. Once you've put points into this, you get a passive skill tier, which is going to be of benefit for this particular build. There are numerous other benefits to running it. Uh, the Artificer Hive is very useful in a lot of situations. I'm not actually using it, but when you're putting together certain skill builds or skill-based builds, the Artificer Hive is fabulous for buffing your other skill. You could run this with the Kingbreaker, so the Linked Laser Pointer would therefore be a must in that particular case. Uh, you have to make sure that you're specced into Rifle in order to get the Linked Laser Pointer. In my case, I'm going to be running the Capacitor, so I've made sure that I'm specced into Assault Rifle. I happen to be specced into Shotgun. Uh, it's not used in this particular case, but one thing to make certain of when you're putting builds together is make sure that the weapons that you're choosing to use for your build you've specced into so you get the additional 15% weapon damage. Uh, and as far as the rest of the portions of the skill tree here, um, you do get 15% bonus armor while aiming a skill, which is very helpful while you're doing the aiming portion of it. Uh, you do get 50% pulse resistance. All of them provide that. You also get in, in, the case, in this case, you can choose skill healing or skill damage. I've taken the extra 10% skill damage, which does help with your, with your skills. So that's the class that we're running. We're running technician class. And as far as the rest of the build, my main weapon is going to be the capacitor. It gives you uh, assault rifle damage, damage to armor, and health damage. It's much lower health damage than a standard assault rifle, but... Uh, it does give you damage to armor. In this particular case, with the way the build is set up, it's doing 105.3k damage. It's at 700 RPM before the Umber buffs kick in. So we, you will see that in the gameplay. Uh, anytime I'm out of cover, you will hear, especially if I'm in cover when I start firing and then exit cover, you will hear the RPM increase as the buffs kick in. Secondary is the Harmony. Uh, it's more a placeholder than anything else in this particular case. Uh, I'm not using it at all in the gameplay I'm going to highlight, and I'm also running the Orbit Pistol, which again, it, it's a placeholder. It's not used in the gameplay. For the rest of the build itself, I'm running four pieces of Umbra. I'm using the Waveform Exotic Holster, mostly because it gives me an additional talent which is the alternating current. Basically, every 10 seconds, it swaps between buffing one skill and then the other. Uh, you do lose out on a little bit of damage output while it's uh, buffing one over the other. Your DPS output for your skills will be very slightly higher using this holster than any other holster. A very good option if you do not have the waveform would be a piece of handy you. Skill damage, skill haste, as high as you can get it. I'm running the Wyvern knee pads for the uh, the brand set bonus of skill damage. It's rolled max skill haste, max skill damage. For the umber pieces themselves, and if you're, you're looking here, you'll notice that I've rolled two of them to armor. Uh, and if you're looking over here, you'll notice that it's two, two, and two. It's actually three skill tiers because of the passive you get from the technician class. Uh, and this is intended to be an in-cover, in out-of-cover, run-and-gun, skill-based build. So, with the Umbra, first one I've rolled it to armor, and it came with crit damage. You can see it's at 9.9% with a crit chance mod. I wanted to get the crit chance on my capacitor up as high as I possibly could. The backpack is also rolled to armor. It also happens to have, crit, in this case, crit chance with a crit damage mod. I'll come back to the... Uh, gear set bonuses and the specific bonuses or talents for the backpack and the chest piece in just a second. Third piece of Umbra is the chest piece. It is rolled weapon damage, max crit chance, and a crit damage mod. And the gloves are also rolled to weapon damage and a and crit damage. 
So going back to the backpack, first and foremost, I am running four pieces of Umbra. At two pieces, you gain an additional 15% crit chance. At three pieces, you get a plus 30% reload speed, which really does help with your DPS because you spend less time not shooting. And lastly, with the four pieces, you get from the shadows into the light. While you're in cover, you gain 10 stacks per second up to 50, so it only takes five seconds to, to max your, uh, your stacks. Each stack gives you 1% additional crit damage and a 0.3% uh, RPM increase. Those stacks are activated when you exit cover, so you have to be out of cover to gain the benefit of them. Also, while you're out of cover, you're gaining stacks, toward, which is the into the light. Uh, while you're out of cover in combat, you gain 10 stacks per second to 50, so again, 5 seconds, and each stack gives you 0.8% armor regen when it's consumed. At max stacks with this build, that gives you about 40% uh, of your armor back over a 5 second period when you enter cover. So this you have to play this if you've used Umber before you understand, but you have to play this in cover. I try and enter all uh, engagements after having put myself in cover. You don't have to be fully in cover behind something. You just have to utilize that function where you press up against the doorway, press up against the wall, etc. Hold that position for five seconds, and then you enter the engagement with more crit damage and a higher weapon RPM. And then when you need to, uh, duck back into cover to regenerate your armor uh, and uh, build the stacks towards the next portion of the engagement. First time I played this style of build, I thought it was going to be cumbersome, and I found that it's actually quite natural. You're in cover, you're out of cover, you're in cover, you're out of cover, and it just becomes a little bit of a flow. You'll see in the gameplay... I'm not just playing aggressively, I'm playing recklessly, and I did it on purpose to see how far I could push or where the limits were, uh, and I did it while I was recording the content. Uh, and it's, I, I got dropped once. Uh, one of the encounters uh, came upon two rogue agents. It was early in the morning. I was not wearing a headset, and what ended up messing me up was I didn't hear the turret that dropped behind me because I wasn't wearing my headset, so... Completely my fault for the, the, for the situational awareness lapse. Uh, but that whole set of gameplay, I did, was not getting any audio clues, and I was playing very recklessly. Uh, so, and again, you'll get to see that when we do the, uh, the footage. The backpack talent is into the light, so it increases your max stacks from 50 to 100, and the stack gain from 10 to 20, so it still only takes 5 seconds to gain all your stacks. The stack consumption increases as well, so you're burning, it takes about the same amount of time, it does, it takes the same amount of time to burn through the stacks, but you now have 100 to play with, which has increased the end of the light portion of it, which is while you're in cover, so you're doing even more crit damage and more uh, weapon RPM. The chest talent increases from the shadows, uh, and it does exactly the same thing except for your armor regeneration, and this is what I alluded to earlier, is you end up with about 40% uh, armor regeneration on this build. So that's the build in a nutshell. Uh, you've heard the description of the gameplay already. Uh, it's not just aggressive, it's reckless. Uh, and again, that was done somewhat on purpose, just to see how far I could push things with this build. It is the most enjoyable hybrid uh, skill build that I've ever put together. Uh, it allowed me to take on heroic content without really much of a care due to a situational awareness lapse, uh, because I wasn't hear the, hearing the audio cues. I did get put down by one of the rogue agents, uh, in one of the encounters, but other than that, I wouldn't say it was without drama, uh, but I never did actually go down. Uh, there were certainly some very close points where, uh, <laughs> someone was watching over my shoulder and we're going, we're cringing at uh, how low my armor was at, at certain points through the engagement. But bear that in mind. If you play this somewhat sanely, it's a very fun build with good survivability, good damage output, and it's a lot of fun to run. And lastly, let's look at the stats for the build. So I'm at 50.1, 50.9, sorry, 50.9, almost 51% crit chance, 120.4 crit damage, 75% uh, headshot damage. There's 12% uh, damage to armor and 10% uh, damage to health, those two multiplicative damages. For the armor itself, uh, it's 1.1 million armor. There's no native armor on killer armor regen. Again, the Umbra is going to give me that when I'm back in cover. The skills themselves are tier 3 skills. Uh, 
34% skill haste bonus, so it's a almost 19 second cooldown, and the damage for the turret is 74.7k damage. The drone is 42.9k damage. One thing to bear in mind with all of the videos is if your watch level is below watch level 1000, you won't get exactly the same numbers that I have. Currently my watch level is over 1000, so I've maxed out my watch. Uh, in this particular case where it's a skill build, I'm taking benefit of basically everything that's in here. Uh, so again, if you're trying to copy and paste this build and your watch level is less than 1000, you won't get exactly the same numbers that I'm getting in this video. So at this point, I'm going to roll the gameplay footage. I want to thank you for watching to this point. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, please like, comment, and share. Uh, it does help the YouTube algorithm. Uh, thank you for watching, and enjoy the gameplay. Sun's forces. They maintain this outpost. The True Sons will be a direct threat to the campus. Got a visual on additional hostiles in the memorial compound. They're moving south. There's a gate between you. It looks closed from here. Agent, you'll need to find a way to open that gate.
Focus trauma detected. Medical assistance needed. All clear. I repeat, the compound is all clear. Now that can't be all of them. Check the interior while I get Henry's people to maintain the perimeter. Agent detected. Rogue bombardier drone detected. Hostile bombardier drone detected. Rogue restore hive detected. Hostile restore hive detected. Rogue artillery turret detected. Hostile artillery turret detected. Serious trauma detected. Science critical. Immediate medical assistance needed. Agent killed. Target lost.
intrusives have turned the memorial into a base. An area beneath you would increase security. I can't access data on this location. Stay alert. I don't know what you're walking into. The schematics Isaac pulled upstairs. We can lock that tunnel door from their control center. That should keep them from being able to transport those borders loaded with DC-62. That should keep them from getting more of those mortars. You think those are the trouble is smart? Fuck you! You slot yourself in with us! I'll make sure you rock! <laughs>
Head back up. The team from the campus has taken position inside the memorial. If you hadn't stopped them, I know they would have used those weapons on us, and we would have ended up like Castle. I can't tell you how relieved I am to have you on our side. Thank you. Today, we dealt a great blow to the True Sun's infrastructure. We confiscated a massive cache of chemical weapons and eliminated a stronghold near the campus. You should be proud. You saved a lot of lives today. <laughs>